Okay, so let's quickly talk a little bit about uh, flat back bench and uh, powerlifting arch um, for your bench press. Now, in reality, there is no such thing as a flat back bench, and I'll quickly explain that. Uh, as we're born, um, we're, our spine develops and um, changes as we grow up. So for instance, when we were just born, our spine doesn't have the two natural kyphotic or lordotic curves that we might have later on in life, just because our body hasn't created that adjustment yet. So like for instance, when we're very young, we're trying to look up and that's what creates one of the first curves over here in our C-spine. And then eventually, um, as we tilt up to look forward, um, that lumbar spine curve is also created. Now, a lot of people might know um, the Kyphotic curve, so the, the rounded back position, because um, we have a lot more issues with that these days because of our posture and because of how we potentially are at our workstations, or even if it's weakness in the back muscles, not being able to pull the structure back, or tightness in the pec muscles or the front muscles, they are pulling us into this bad position. Um, so if you are doing bench, um, we are looking for mobility through our T-spine. Now our T-spine is very well that Chuck can one say because we have the rib cage and we have the sternum that supports this entire structure. Then we have a ton of muscles. So between each and every single rib, there's a muscle. Um, there's muscles over top of that. Um, we have the shoulder blades. They have to be secured by 17 different muscles and they get secured within on that frame, right? To make our arms move. Um, so very complex system. So a lot of people think that the mobility or the bridge or arch actually comes from the lumbar spine. Well, that's actually very untrue. If you are benching and your main arch position or your arch is coming from that lumbar spine, I do need to caution you. Um, once again, we don't have ribs down here in our midsection. Yes, we do have a phenomenal amount of back muscles, uh, core muscles to help us brace and support. Um, but these muscles don't keep us out of danger. So if you are arching through this lower lumbar spine only, um, you're playing with fire because essentially um, with no extra supports and only the muscle supporting it, if we're actually bending through the spine, we're putting a lot of extra pressure on these discs. And that's where herniated discs come from. So it's really important to create a strong base by teaching yourself how to do this powerlifting arch by pulling your body into that position. So some of you might know the exercise where you lay lies flat on your stomach and you bring up your arms and your legs at the same time. Uh, some people call them supermans. Um, some people uh, might have a different name for them. Some people use planks for this exact reason. Um, extensions, hyperextensions just to get this base of muscle stronger to be able to assist us in our powerlifting bench. Now, if you are doing just a flat bench, as they call it, you're not actually doing a flat bench because your back is never ever gonna be flat unless you're born or unless hereditary, you eventually got diagnosed with a flat back. Um, if you wanna make your back flat, yes, you can bring your knees up towards your chest, that will cause your back to be flat, but now you've taken away your legs as that brace or that stability, which will change the exercise, change the purpose of what we're doing. Um, so for the purpose of today, I'm just going to explain what flat back bench actually is. You still want a dynamic tension. You still want that art through the lower back and even upper back, but not as exaggerated as we would have in powerlifting. The reason in powerlifting we're trying to incorporate such a big arch is that we can engage more of our lat muscle. So the origin and insertion for the lat muscle is on the arm and on the lower part here of the hip bone. And if we can get the muscle to really torque up and create some tension, it's kind of like a slingshot. We're building that dynamic tension to be able to give the feedback through our legs, through our core, back to our arms to be able to bench more. Um, so I'm gonna do the two setups. Um, my way of sitting up is different. Uh, there are several ways of sitting up for the powerlifting bench, but I'm just gonna quickly go into the normal flat back bench for most people. So the minute I drop my legs down, there's a natural arch in my back already, but I wanna make sure that I'm bracing tightly. Crystal will discuss the brace with you guys. We're bracing tightly, 
and we're in a good position. So I'm stable. So if somebody had to push me from the side, I'm not just flopping all over the floor. I've got my heels pulled back and I'm in a good stable position. My trunk is nice and tight and I'm safe. Yes, my back is still arched, but that is a safe part of having your back arched. You're not just bending through the spine. For powerlifting, however, I'm trying to get a reduced range of motion. So less distance from the bar to my chest. So I want to bring my chest closer to the bar and load up my back muscles because they're way bigger than my pec muscles and they can really help me with the bench. So we'll talk about bar path in a little bit, but this arch is also going to help us with our bar back path to be able to send it in a back V, all right? And Krista's gonna, once again, discuss that with you guys. So I'm gonna show what it looks like for a powerlifting bench. You can hold onto the barbell, you can hold onto the rack. The main thing is that you get your hips nice and high, loading your hips high. That pushes me onto my shoulders, pinning me into the bench press. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my shoulder and tuck it down and back. So I'm depressing and retracting my shoulder blades to the middle of the bench to try and load as high as I can on my traps. My chin is tucked into my chest. My leg swings back to create that dynamic arch. Nice and tight. Now I'm unloading for myself, so I'm gonna bring my hips up for a second. Unrack, have the bar ready, pull my hips down, and now I'm ready for my bench. How wide should my hands be during a bench press? It really depends on what you're trying to achieve and your lever lengths. So for instance, if you're taller, your lever lengths will be wider. If you're shorter, your lever lengths will be shorter. As a power lifter, we're trying to get the most efficiency out of our lift. I want to reduce the distance between the barbell and my chest. So that means I need to go wider. So for the purpose of powerlifting, we will be focusing on a nice wide span. We have 82 centimeters to work with. You can go measure that on your bar. That's normally the first ringlet that you would find on a barbell. If I go the widest I can to keep it a standard lift and an approved lift, I need my index finger on that ringlet. For me, that's too wide. So I have brought my fingers in and I use my ring finger to be able to set up. For some folks that have shoulder injuries, you might have to come even narrower. The one thing I do caution you guys against, if especially if you're doing powerlifting, is going super narrow. Super narrow just means you're activating more of your triceps. You're neglecting the ability to retract your shoulder blades and depress them, involving your lats, which will cost you in your bench press. The more you can incorporate your back muscles into your lift, the better results you will get. Next, we'll be moving on to how to actually hold the bar. Okay, so the next thing we're focusing on is hand position. If I have the barbell stacked into my palm, that will put weight through my wrist and my elbow. That way I have the ability to incorporate my flexors and extensors to be able to give me feedback because they go across my elbow joint so I can incorporate my triceps, especially on the lockout position. If I have my hands in a bad position during the setup, I won't be as optimal as I can be. So the hand position we call bulldog hand position is just where we have the hands slightly internally rotated. I'm going to lie down and show you guys what that looks like. When I grab onto the bar, I'm going to wrap my palm around, increasing the tension in my fingers and gripping onto the bar like this. So my hand is essentially internally rotating slightly. I grab onto the bar. As you can see, as I grab, my hand internally rotates cinching my fingers in to be able to have that setup that I'm looking for. So to make sure 
everybody understands. I don't want my wrist in full extension, nor do I want my weight in neutral. I want to make sure that the weight rests in my palm. So it's a happy medium between the two. This is very important because if I have it in full extension, I completely take my flexors out of the game. Not only that, I minimize my tricep activation. So to have the most optimal position is very important. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. If my palm is in neutral, my barbell is actually, or the weight is actually in front of my elbow, meaning all that weight now sits on my thumb. If I'm in extension, meaning the barbell is behind my elbow, I'm going to change my bar path so much, which will also make me very inefficient. I want to make sure I have a happy medium between the two where the weight rests through the middle of my palm. Okay, so we're gonna quickly just review on how wide should I be holding that barbell. Ultimately, we would like to stack um, the weight. We're gonna stack the weight onto the palm, which will then be stacked onto the wrist, which will then be stacked onto the elbow in the down position. And if I have it in the up position, that's gonna then in return stack the weight back into my shoulder socket, which if I'm depressing and retracting my shoulder blade, will put weight right into that socket versus um, displacing it and putting it in a bad position, having muscles carry that. So we're using the skeletal system to assist us in stacking, in return helping us out with our bench. So what that would look like in a good stacked position is I'm gonna have my shoulders retracted and depressed, my chin tucked, unracking my barbell, bringing the bar to my chest, I have my wrist over my elbow, and I'm in a good position. If I'm looking at taking that any wider, now I'm going to bring that to my chest, and that changes my bar path, and puts a little bit more stress on my wrist, and on my elbow and shoulder, especially if I don't have it retracted and depressed properly. If I bring my hands narrower, that is going to now change the elbow position completely, which will change the exercise you're doing. Okay, so let's look at where's the most proficient place for my arms to be during the bench press. A lot of folks do the 90 degree angle. If I have my elbow up like this, in line with my shoulder at a 90 degree angle, I'm not engaging my entire ability of my pec to generate force, nor am I engaging my serratus anterior, my boxer muscle, or my lats or any of my other back muscles. So what I would like to see is an ultimate 75 degree angle. I'm only going to be able to really get that 75 degree angle if I can retract, pull my shoulder blades together, and depress them, pull them down into my back pocket. So. What I'd like to see here is shoulders in a good place, chin tucked up. When I bring the barbell down, I'm at that 75 degree angle. If I bring it up to a 90 degree angle, the bar will float up towards my neck, compromising my position. Now I'm not only minimized the potential from my pec, but I've placed my shoulders under a lot of stress. So I'm going to come out of that position by pulling my hands into a 75 degree angle, activating more of my back muscles, and now my pec can generate more force. I also see some people go below that 75 degree angle. Now this is putting a lot of extra rotation in my rotator cuffs. I could actually damage my rotator cuff or completely tear them. le développer couché sur le banc pour vraiment comprendre comment utiliser mon pied et mon muscle de jambe. C'est-à-dire que lorsque vous faites votre mise en place, il faut faire certain de mettre les pieds plats par terre. C'est-à-dire que vous ne voulez pas mettre la pression sur vos talons, 
Il se trouve à taille comme ceci lorsque vous êtes sur le bas. D'abord, les pieds plats par terre le plus que possible et une pression égale à travers du pied. Lorsque vous faites votre mouvement, lorsque vous descendez la barre à poitrine, c'est à ce moment ici que vous utilisez tous vos muscles de jambes. C'est-à-dire que lorsque je suis prêt à faire mon mouvement vers le haut, vous voulez penser à pousser vos orteils vers l'avant de vos souliers. Presque, vous voulez vraiment pousser en, à travers du devant de vos souliers. Ceci fait que vous allez mettre plus de pression sur vos muscles dorsaux et vos omoplates. Et ça, vous donne, vous, ça va vous donner plus de stabilité sur le bas. Deuxièmement, ceci fait que ça vous donne une, vraiment une, un bon trajet de la barre. Et le trajet de la barre, c'est un concept super important de développer couché que je vais discuter avec vous en prochain. Euh, je vais démontrer maintenant. Maintenant, mes pieds sont plus par terre. Je prends la barre. Lorsque je descends la barre, quand je monte la barre, je pousse avec mes pieds. Maintenant que vous sachez comment faire la propre mise en place sur le bar pour le développer couché, ainsi que où mettre vos mains sur la barre et comment appeler vos joints, comment utiliser vos jambes et vos pieds, vous pouvez maintenant faire le mouvement. Sauf qu'il faut pas s'attendre d'avoir un bon trajet de la barre. Ce que je veux dire par ça, c'est que lorsque je fais le mouvement de ma poitrine vers le haut, si vous tracez une ligne sur la barre, vous allez voir que ça a, um, ça a vraiment de l'air comme la lettre J. Lorsque je commence à la poitrine et je termine au haut, je vais terminer directement au-dessus de mes épaules. En terminant directement au-dessus de mes épaules, ça fait certain que ça vous donne vraiment un, un avantage mécanique. Ça fait certain que votre poignet est empilé sur votre coude qui est empilé sur votre épaule, comme on en a parlé auparavant. Je vais maintenant démontrer ce qu'un bon trajet de la barre a de l'air. Lorsque je complète mon mouvement, lorsque je descends à ma poitrine, le moment que je suis prêt à pousser vers le haut, je pousse sur mes pieds, comme je, je vous ai parlé avant. Je pousse mes pieds, mes orteils, vers l'avant de mon soulier. En faisant ceci, ça fait certain de donner, ça donne un, un, genre un poussé, mais à l'envers, ça vous aide à, à vraiment faire ce trajet J là et de finir le mouvement directement au-dessus de vos épaules. de faire le développé couché de la façon la plus sécuritaire et de vous donner un, un avantage et de se concentrer sur la respiration et euh, ce qu'on appelle la pression intra-abdominale. C'est-à-dire que lorsque vous commencez le mouvement et vous allez euh, amener la barre à, la, à votre poitrine, avant de faire ceci, il faut remplir la, la, ta poitrine et ton tronc avec de l'air et créer la pression. C'est-à-dire comme tu vas vraiment forcer dans ton bedon. Euh, ce que ceci fait, c'est que ça remplit ton bedon de l'air et de la pression et ça protège tes muscles, tes os et tes organes lorsque tu fais un mouvement dont il y a beaucoup de force. Également, en faisant ceci, um, en, en, tu lèves ta poitrine et le point où la barre va toucher ta poitrine vers le, vers, le, vers le plafond, dans le fond, 
euh, et ça diminue la distance que la barre va voyager également. Euh, le point le plus important que le monde oublie souvent est de ne pas dégonfler votre poitrine ou votre euh, bedon trop tôt. Il faut vraiment garder ton, ta poitrine et ton bedon gonflés jusqu'à euh, jusqu la fin. C'est-à-dire que tu vas garder ton tronc serré et gonflé et contracté jusqu'à la fin du mouvement. Je vais maintenant te montrer. Maintenant, je fais la mise en place pour le bas. Mes pieds sont plats à terre. Je prends ma barre. Avant de descendre la barre, je prends un gros respire et je contracte mon, mon bedon. C'est lorsque le mouvement se termine au haut que vous pouvez prendre un respire et dégonfler et desserrer votre bedon. So let's quickly review our adaptive bench press position. Um, this will mean that our feet is up on a platform. If you are competing at the Warrior Games or Invictus Games, this is going to be your bench setup. Now, I'm not going to set up like I did previously with my legs. Um, I'm going to actually show a different technique of how to get that thoracic tension uh, to be able to load up my back muscles more to make myself more proficient. If you are an adaptive athlete, I really do recommend having your coach there to assist you to get your shoulder blades back they can kind of like hug around you and pull you into that better position. So you really be able to set you up to the best position possible for you to be able to be successful in your lift. Um, so I have only have one strap, but I've just used a plain yoga strap. You are able to brace yourself in two different areas. Um, a lot of people are like, no, I don't need the, br the brace or the strap. The strap is really important. Crystal will discuss leg drive with you guys. So this strap is giving me the potential to use my legs to brace into the bench, brace into the um, strap to be able to give me that feedback, the same as my leg drive would if I had my feet down. A lot of people also prefer just using one. I always recommend using two because if your foot slips off of the platform during a lift, that will be seen as a no lift. So a lot of effort for no gratification. So make sure you use both straps if you have them available. If you're training, one strap mid-thigh should do the trick. I'm just going to get into position so we can just review how I'm going to set myself up. Really using the bar, pushing myself towards the camera, loading up my shoulder blades, getting as much tucked as I can, depression, retraction, Getting that barbell ready, ready for my lift off. Up we go. And on that drive, I'm gonna push my legs out and try and spread them to be able to create that leg drive. So once again, I'm using the strap. I'm pushing out towards it and I'm pushing up. That way I'm gonna to get to fire up my glutes. Once again, that lat muscle and able to drive that core and stability back into the barbell, which will then arc my bar to create that perfect bar path. Hope that helps you guys out.